brother. But going back to this, I was checking the ba- the the bad friends, and then I obviously stumbled across this thread of a lot of bad friends podcast fans being upset that they cancelled a Norfolk show last minute, but they then do- decided to double check their YouTube channel and see what they've been doing. And God Almighty, mate, they do numbers in it. Their numbers have been steady since the beginning. It feels like they haven't really dipped under a hundred thousand ever. So whatever the fire and the kid are going through, these guys aren't going through at all in the slightest. I look at the full videos. The full episode videos are 400,000, 673,000, 709,000, 764,000, 300,000, like crazy amount of views for the full podcast and the clips. Um, maybe not as much, 12,000, 10,000 here and there, but they are doing absolute numbers on flipping bad friends. Like really, 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 really good. And it makes me wonder, overall um why they probably don't get as much a type and attention from other fans when it comes to comedy podcasts they kind of just do their own thing um which is probably the best way to kind of go about it you don't have any crazy reddits after you and whatnot you can just kind of exist in your own bubble and apart from the kalila and bobby lee drama with brendan they've kind of avoided any kind of other comedy drama type of stuff in it they kind of just do their own thing but that aside that aside i think this post from people who are upset that the Norfolk show got cancelled is again a reflection on what I've said before here on the sub on sorry on the flipping um stream about these stand-up comedians how they're so sensitive and don't like any form of negative criticism because I feel for the most part they only see their fans as walking wallets they don't really see them as people they don't really care for them at all in the slightest and all they want you to do is to consume what they do so watch their specials, buy their merch, um, you know, buy tickets to their shows, view all their things online so they can get money from that, you know, click the ads on the sponsors. That's all they want you to do. They don't care about you as people at all in the slightest. And it's really upsetting and sad because I feel like a lot of these comedians, a lot of these comedy podcasts, maybe more so than others, they probably benefit a lot from the regular working class person. Like I feel like comedy I feel like for some reason, you know, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, uh, assuming here without no evidence, but I feel as if most stand-up comedians, the majority of their fan base are made up of like regular working class people, not creatives, not cool people, not upper class people, um, whatever it may be, just regular middle class, working class people make up the majority of these comedians fan bases and these guys and girls who love these comedians and follow them around the country for the most part you'd imagine they don't have maybe they don't have limited funds but they can't go to every show so sometimes when they decide to buy a ticket to a show they decide to get a babysitter they decide to maybe you know order a car service get a hotel whatever it may be these are big things they have to do to kind of make sure they have the time and the capability to come and see a show so when a comedian cancels a show last minute without any kind of explanation and just kind of leaves these big guys and girls with these tickets that are completely dead it's really a bummer because again i feel like they kind of owe these guys and girls for their careers um even though most of them would say no it's just my talent but essentially these regular middle class working class people are what made these guys and girls multi-millionaires which is super ironic but for some reason these comedians don't seem to care about the feelings um of their fans in the slightest or want to offer any kind of explanation so this is courtesy of the, of the bad friend subreddit and a person posted norfolk va show cancelled they said so incredibly upset right now i've never really got into comedians or even podcasts for that matter when i heard that they were touring i was freaking excited to see them i live about an hour or so from norfolk and was more than happy to make the drive I hadn't bought tickets because I saw the mass amount of seats left and had a sixth sense that they would cancel the show. Super bummed that they are easily my favorite comedians and I love them together. So upset. But at the same time, why the fuck would they choose Norfolk over Richmond, North VA or even Washington DC? I legit knew this would happen. There was virtually no advertising for this show unless you follow all their social media accounts. Watch out for your shows, people. If there's a ton of unsold tickets, beware that might, might come next now to find a city close enough to make the drive because i cannot miss this so this fan got shitted on last minute and they're still looking to buy tickets for another event in another city 
the loyalty of comedian, you know, comedy podcast fans is really crazy, man. These some of these comedians don't deserve their fans. But this goes to show this is another example of like there was I think Tim Dillon went through it, maybe just as the pandemic kind of ended. I think he was just lazy and didn't want to do shows. But a few of his shows weren't maybe selling as enough tickets as you probably would have liked, and he kept cancelling them. And I think comedians do that anyway in general. I think there's something about these comedians where they start selling tickets and then suddenly a show doesn't sell enough tickets. They don't feel obliged to just do the show as a pro. They kind of expect all their shows to sell out or to be, you know, maybe 80% full. So if it dips under that, they'd rather just cancel it than, than go and perform to a half empty, empty room, which I feel like it's, again, disrespectful to the audience. Um, but, you know, for some reason, these fans like to get fleeced and to get flipping, you know, bent over or flipping, you know, whatever it may be and spanked continuously. And another person here made a post also. How bad friends could have handled the Norfolk cancellation? They said, I bought tickets for the Norfolk show and was disappointed to learn that it was cancelled. I learned from Reddit where I posted about how excited I was asking for a pre-show meetup. Your big evolutionary commission for the 2020. BL needs a haircut and head shake or get TF out town. BL needs a haircut and head shake. What's that? Oh, Bobby Lee needs a haircut and head shake. Or get... Okay, cool. Bobby Lee. Now, I quite like Bobby Lee's hair. I think it kind of suits him. He's actually got pretty decent hair, um, you know, considering his age and whatnot. He looks really good, personally. I think I, I, I kind of like his hair. Um, I'm probably not a fan of the really tiny T-shirts. That's the only thing I'd let I'd kind of tell him to change. He's clearly a size medium or something, and he wears that like X, uh, extra small or something. I hate how tiny his T-shirts are, but I think that's part of his look. He kind of wants to look a bit bummy and whatnot, and a little bit eccentric and stuff, and have his little belly popping out from the bottom. It's all part of the flipping comedic silly goose kind of personality, but whatever. Um, big up um, illusionary commission appreciate you brother it continues here it says i heard from another ticket buyer that the show was cancelled and was incredulous and there was no evidence just a few days before that it was cancelled i tweeted the show and andrew no response I, is this guy is this was this written by a chat gpt or something like or somebody that can't speak english i think right i had taken off work i had made arrangements for a three-hour trip to the venue i had tickets um i paid for insurance of the tickets that i'll never get back ouch Right now, it's the day of the event, and it's still pretty nebulous um, what happened. Nothing from the venue, nothing from Bobby or, or Santino. One email two days in advance from Ticketmaster. The latest podcast came out today, advertising Norfolk, which was clearly cancelled, despite them asking me to do to come out. I wonder what is that about, though? Why don't these comedians like to explain why they cancel shows? Or if they do, like Brenda, they just lie. Why not just be honest and say, hey, the shows didn't sell enough tickets, and I didn't think it'd be worth my time to kind of have you guys come out for a half empty show. I won't be able to give my all. I apologize. I'll make it right next time. Why lie about these shows? Like, I don't understand the lying. Really strange. Like, we all know why you're canceling the show because you didn't sell enough tickets. So just, you know, say so. But there's no need to lie about it. I don't think it's really, really strange, man. Um, it continues. I get that they might be embarrassed about low sales, but it's no reason to abandon fans and disregard them. I agree. Lucy K once had a bit about how much people should go through to come see a show. You should watch it exactly. I just think in general, just respect your audience. Like you shouldn't ever go in there and try and half ask things. But again, that's what I said before. I think most stand up comedians see their fans as walking wallets. They don't see you as people at all in the slightest. They don't respect your time. And most of them don't know the plight of the regular person. I think most comedians in general anyway don't like working in or participating in regular society they want to kind of live outside of it they re they regard regular civilians as somewhat beneath them so they don't really have any experience of what it is to kind of live in a, re a regular life day to day and have a job and shit and you know have a family and responsibilities obligations that may not allow you to just on a whim go to a show here and there so if they decide to announce a show and plan it ahead of time or advertise ahead of time and you buy tickets, they should try and fulfill them because the, men, the, the, the people that went, you know, to make an effort to kind of go there, you don't know what they kind of, how much of an effort they made to kind of get to where they are and kind of, kind of see you. But these guys don't care. 
Um, it continues here to say, I wish I, I wish I had stood up and told us what was going on. We follow you and that is leadership one on one. Be transparent. We made arrangements. We changed our lives for a few days in some cases to so come and see you. I certainly did. At least you could do is act like you cared or even a little for us. Please do better. Your podcast today was hilarious. I wish I could have seen you in person. It's just certain clumsy the way you handled it. The comments are pretty respectful and kind of nice, to be fair. They're a little bit, you know, um, vomit inducing how they're still trying to cuck for them but i kind of appreciate that they're at least trying to be somewhat constructive in their criticism not be you know swearing effing and blinding and calling them names and shit but god almighty most likely they're gonna pay them dust they're not gonna care they're not gonna address it and they're just gonna keep it moving really and truly that's what's gonna happen in it that's a real sad um part of the flipping occasion here but yeah, bad um, bad friends are really bad friends or bad podcasters to their actual fans, which is absolutely hilarious um, when you flip and notice it. But there's this interesting video from the show, actually, that somebody uploaded. No, they up somebody uploaded actually on flipping YouTube, a little YouTube short that features what the bad friend show looks like. And it makes sense why they're so agitated and upset, because it does look kind of fun. From what I can see here, everybody's kind of on their feet. It looks like from this video of this short. But let's play it anyway. This is um the caption is Daddy Why You Die Bad Friends Tour. And this is I guess them singing at the tour itself. Let's be real. That kind of does look like fun. That looks like fun. I'm not going to lie. And it's actually made me wonder anyway, in general, um, why don't Fire and the Kid do, why haven't Fire and the Kid done this? Why haven't they gone on tour and done something like this? Because in my opinion, this is something I've always said. I feel like Brendan isn't a, you know, stand-up comedian in any way, shape or form. He's probably never going to be funny in a conventional sense. But I think he could probably be a decent host at one of these type of shows where they do like a live t fight k they have the segments that they have on their show they have fan interactions and shit and whatnot maybe he comes up and tells a funny story like he did before when he started maybe they have little skits and bits type of stuff big up bc big up luke thomas and shit maybe they have fan call-ins or fans come up on stage they could actually do a pretty decent i feel like live the fire and a kid in this sort of style that bad friends are doing it and if you're just if you're listening to this you won't see this but the bad friends toy looks like they recreated this 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 the, um, the studio that they have for bad friends with all the artwork and stuff and um, they have a screen also showing some clips i'm assuming they have a band and stuff like it looks like a pretty decent um event to go to um so which explains why the bad friends you know fans are so pissed that they cancelled the norfolk show but i think this template or this way of doing a show would work really well for the fire and the kid i honestly do think it would work really well um who just said i thought the fire and the kid started doing our live shows early. yeah exactly they did they, they did Uche, but they stopped doing it after a while i think you know to be cynical probably because they knew they can make mon more way more money individually than they could together you're splitting the cost splitting the fan base it's probably a lot of work to put them together and whatnot and it's much easier for each of Brendan, Shaw, Ben, Brian to just rock up at a comedy club, get in front of a microphone, spit their shit and go home and, you know, with a check in their back pocket. And then to put on a whole entire show, you're having to prep all this stuff in the, you know, um, wherever you're going, make sure the equipment gets there, mic check rehearsals. That's probably why they stopped doing it, but they should probably go back to it. I really do think that'll be a way better way to maybe restart the podcast, give it a new life, get some new, get the fans on board, or just maybe just change the flipping narrative around them as people. That might help somewhat to put on an entertaining show for their fans. But they haven't done one in a long, 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 long time. But I think they would do way better than anything else. And also just combining their ticket sales, right? Like Brian Callen and Brendan could probably sell out a, a decent amount of venues together. 
um, with obviously the addition of like special guests like Chris and Leah rolling through and shit. I think that would work out pretty well for them. But um, big up the Bad Friends crew and the fans out there. You know, if you did miss the Norfolk show, then I feel bad for you. But again, another reminder, these comedians don't care about you, man. They're not your friends. They just see us walking, flipping wallets. And no matter how much support you give them, you know, they'll just keep on disappointing you at every fucking turn. So go out there and get some actual real friends if you can. Because these guys are definitely not your friends. I can tell you that for free. I can tell you that for free. Moving on from that, let's talk about DS. Where is it here? Let's talk about, where is it? Where is it? Oh, I missed the video. No, there it is yet. Um, yeah, let's talk about this a bit. I want to quickly check this and then we're going to move on because this is fucking hilarious um mrs wise okay see so yeah, super tip wait, wait here we're just playing and we'll play this video big up mark e miller let's get mark e miller's video loaded up here on my side of things and then we can kind of continue because i thought the start of this video was absolutely hilarious personally um let's see if this kind of loads up and it goes where it needs to go to and then we're going to jump into talking about all the comedy stuff um now after i played this video bear with me a second as it loads cool let's go back big up the illusionary commission appreciate you brother you think that looks like fun i want refund on sc <laughs> you know what i mean illusionary commission big up for the tw two dollars 20 super chat you know what i mean i don't mean fun for you and i or everyone else in the stream chat i mean in comparison to what they do compared to the t5k podcast compared to the clips that we've seen on brenda's show stand up compared to you know the, the the flipping diabolical nature of brian callen's um podcast that he does with sam tripoli compared to everything else that they do separately those shows look way more fun and will be a better option for them to do personally and i think if you're into those kind of podcasts anyway going to those type of shows and seeing them dance around and do songs and shit it's probably way better than them standing on stage and just talking like they did on the podcast that'd be boring so you know technically it's fun would i go obviously not but technically it's somewhat fun i would say anyway but again, what do I know? Moving.